A viewer asked me to explain ISO, shutter speed, frame rate, and aperture simply, and that's what we're gonna do in this episode. All right, if you're looking for all sorts of technical stuff and diagrams and mathematics and everything else, this is not the video for you. If you're new to this or you want a refresher, we're gonna go over this simply so you can understand it and use it. First, let's talk about shutter speed. When I'm looking at this camera, unlike a photographer, I'm not using shutter speeds like 200 and 400 and 1000 and all that. What you wanna do is just set for now, just set your shutter speed to twice that. If you're shooting at 24 frames per second, then set your shutter speed to twice that, 48 or 50, or whatever your camera lets you do that's closest to that. Then you're done. Next, let's go into aperture because that's gonna affect ISO. Aperture is really, really simple. It's just how big the hole in the lens is open. A very low aperture, like 1.3, it's gonna be really open, and a very high aperture, like 22, it's gonna be very closed down. You want background blurry, then you're gonna set the aperture to a low number, which is gonna open the lens way up and let in a lot of light. If you wanna get a lot in a shot that's in focus, for instance, like you're shooting landscapes, you're gonna close down the aperture, which means you're going to set that number higher. Just gotta remember they're reversed. A high aperture means you're closing the lens down. A low aperture means you're opening the lens up. That camera is set to an ISO of 640. The shutter speed is 50. I'm shooting at 24 frames per second and I'm focused right here. Here's what'll happen as I move forward. Of course the light doesn't show it, but I go out of focus and as I move backward, I start to go out of focus. The way I stay in focus with an aperture is I have a piece of tape on the floor that tells me where to stand and I just don't move forward and backward. If you have a camera that does autofocus and face tracking, good on you. Another thing to note is your lens. I can take a super expensive $5,000 camera and I can put a cheap $300 lens on it. It'll be okay. I can take this cheap DSLR, it's about 300 bucks now, and I can put a thousand dollar lens on it and I will hands down beat anybody with their super duper camera and their cheap lens. I just for the fun of it, what I'm gonna do, I have this set up, this camera's probably about four feet away from me-ish over there. Um, that back wall over there is probably six or seven feet away from me. Now you'll notice that Cylon over there on that little mini tripod is quite out of focus as is the background. I'm gonna set that camera to different apertures while we're going here, just so you can see the effect this has on it. Okay, what I've done there on this 50 millimeter lens, that's a full frame camera over there, is I've taken and I've knocked the aperture down to 1.4. That means the aperture inside has opened up and let in a ton of light. I would compensate that by changing the ISO and things are gonna be a lot blurrier. Let's fix the ISO first, if we can. Now I did drop the aperture down to 1.4 and what happened was I had to adjust my ISO and instead of it being at 640 before with an aperture of 3.2, it's now at 160 with an aperture of 1.4. Now I'm not even sure I'm in focus, but I'm gonna go out of focus pretty darn quickly because there's a lot more blurry background there and my distance of focusing here front and back is gonna be really small. Now I've opened my aperture to 22. You are not gonna even be able to see me because the aperture is closed down to a tiny little pinhole. Let's adjust the ISO and we'll see what we got now. Okay, as you'll notice, everything is in focus back there. There's no blurry back there. I move forward and back and I generally stay in focus. I have the aperture set to 22, but I've had to up the ISO in that camera to 12,800. That's a lot. I'm looking at the front of this camera and the aperture is a little tiny pinhole. Remember, 22, big number, small little hole low number, big hole. Would I shoot like this? Sure, why not? 
I kind of like it set up the way I have it, and I kind of like having the background blurry, and that's the only reason that I do it that way. Let's see what happens if we leave the aperture and the shutter speed and everything alone, and let's just mess with the ISO can you, so you can see the effect that has. This is 640, aperture 3.2, shutter speed of 50. Now, without changing anything, I went with an ISO, I yanked it down from 640 down to 100. I still have an aperture at 3.2, and the shutter speed is still at 50. Let's go the other way and see what happens. <laughs> now I've gone the other way. Um, the aperture still is at 3.2, and the shutter speed is still at 50, and I've taken the ISO, and I've run it up to 12,800. Now let's play with the shutter speed, which is really something you shouldn't play with. Uh, lowest it'll go on this particular camera at this time, and the shooting mode is 30. Let's see what that looks like. Now you'll notice I set the shutter speed down. It's now at 30, and it let in some more light. So now things are going to be looking a bit less natural. It's just, it's just not going to be the same at that frame rate. Let's go the other way, and I'll show you how it looks really unnatural. Now I've upped the shutter speed to 1,000. That's a lot. Now I had to adjust my ISO, and now it's at 12,800 to accommodate for less light when I up the shutter speed. This is not gonna look natural. It's gonna look really, really funky, uh, jittery, uh, too weird. That's what happens when you mess with the shutter speed. Again, just take what you're shooting at, 30 or 60 or 24, and get about double that on your camera, and then just forget about it from there. Okay, now we're back to 640. We're shooting at 24. Shutter speed is at 50, and the aperture is at 3.2, where I happen to like it. On your phone or on your camera in auto mode, is it's adjusting the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO all the time, because you're letting it say, I'm gonna adjust this so I can get what I think. Many people are scared to put their cameras into manual mode because when they do, all this junk flies up and there's menus and junk all over the place and they kind of freak out when they're new at this. Just practice this and you'll be a pro at no time and you can just disregard all that other stuff from now. Go get your camera and set it to manual mode. Don't freak out when all this stuff pops up. Now, next thing you want to do is how many frames per second. Set it to, say, 24. For this example, let's say set it to 30. Set your shutter speed. Figure out how to do that to twice that. It'll be 60 or 70 or 50 or somewhere in there, whatever that twice is or near that. Now you're done with that. Now set your aperture to, like, 4 or 6 or something like that. Maybe you're doing this outside or where there's a lot of light. Now go onto your ISO and start adjusting the ISO up or down to either stop too much light from coming in because it's blown out or to open it up so you get enough light. Once you do that, now you know what you got and you can shoot and you don't have to worry about things changing on you. So there you go. Manual mode is not a scary place. Lastly, don't forget, I have free files, I have free sound effects, I have free courses on how to do a commercial on monitors and everything else over at Basic Filmmaker University, so go check it out. And one last thing, I'm going to let you know on the sly right now, my new YouTube Academy course is available over there. It's 80% off, and by February 29th, that night, it's gone, and you'll never see it again, so check it out. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. I'm waiting. There's this is pretty soundproof area, but apparently there's this helicopter person, guy, army, whatever that tends to buzz this studio for some reason. I don't know. Maybe they're looking for some filmmaking tips or something. So I'm just going to wait out until they go away.